A 22-year-old woman allegedly stole a laptop from Speaker Nancy Pelosi's office during the insurrection. Boy, was she disappointed when she found out that laptop was running Windows XP. Uh, and the FBI is investigating whether or not she stole the laptop to sell it to Russia. Now, whether or not this turns out to be true, I think we have the next plot for the next Liam Neeson movie. Have you seen these Liam Neeson movies? Of course you have. It's full of excitement, adventure, uh, action. Sounds like the next plot. Uh, people don't want to buy the uh, My Pillow anymore, so many retailers won't be selling it much longer. The guy who invented My Pillow said the presidential election was rigged. I think he just needs to reinvent it. Maybe if he sold pillows at marijuana dispensaries and called them High Pillow, he'd get a better reception. No? A study finds that contrary to what you might think, if everyone agrees upon something, the chances increase that they're wrong. Take, for example, Crocs, and that's not a dig to our healthcare workers who wear Crocs on a daily basis. It's just not a good idea. Uh, speaking of studies, a study says that kids in college don't learn much, and it didn't take a college degree to figure that out. Uh, also trending in the news, a man was discovered to have been living in O'Hare Airport for the past three months. A gentle soul, his friends called him, came to the U.S. five years ago to complete his master's degree and was headed back home. He said goodbye to his friends in California on October 19th and boarded a Chicago-bound flight from his Los Angeles uh, location to begin his journey back to India, but he never made it. When his connecting flight to India landed in Chicago, he got off the plane, went to grab a bite to eat, and while eating, he thought to himself, COVID. You know they beat people in sticks uh, in India if you come out of the house with, and while they're under COVID restrictions. So it's kind of a good thought. Uh, so he made the conscious decision to miss his connecting flight and stay at O'Hare Airport. Now, this was a conscious decision. If you ever been to O'Hare Airport, I've worked there twice. It's not what I would call hospitable conditions. Uh, so anyway, next day comes. He didn't get rebooked on the next flight to India. Day in, day out, three months. He stayed at the airport in a secure area. At some point during his time, he found a missing employee badge and used it to access even more secure areas of the airport. Now, let's get this clear. This is not a homeless man strapped for cash. The price of food at O'Hare is outrageous, even with a fake employee ID. So he's got money. And while not the most accommodating, there's restaurants, there's bathrooms, there's people watching, there's unlimited social opportunities, ambient music, nice views if you're into airplanes, and lots of opportunities for exercise. Oh, here's a large airport if you've never been there. What more could you want out of life? Sounds like a fun time to me. Well, he was arrested and put in the county jail after two United employees asked him for his badge, which they determined was a badge that belonged to an operations manager who lost it some time ago. Listen, I think that staying at O'Hare Airport every day for the past three months was punishment enough. He has no criminal history and he caused no issues while he was there. It's just the uh, security at O'Hare is a little butt hurt, so they need to make an example. If it wasn't for those damn United employees, he'd still be there and we wouldn't know nothing about it. Uh, he's been bailed out, given housing assistance, and put on house arrest while waiting for the next court date. I, personally, I am very impressed, I, I, very impressed that this was allowed to happen or that he even found a way to do this. Damn United employees. On the show, the original Muppet Show is coming to Disney Plus. A Georgia man is charged, uh, that was charged in a U.S. Capitol attack dies by suicide. Bernie Sanders memes are taking over the internet. Denzel Washington movie Equalizer it turns into a TV show starring Queen Latifah. Shaquille O'Neal joins law enforcement in Georgia and Dave Chappelle tests positive for COVID. Let's talk about it. It's the Sean Jackson Show. I'm Sean Jackson. Who's the man that would risk his neck for his brother man? Shaq. That's who. Shaquille O'Neal said he's always wanted to be a sheriff and now the NBA legend has officially taken a role at the Henry County Sheriff's Office. 
Friday, newly elected Sheriff Reginald Scandrit announced he has named O'Neill his Director of Community Relations. As we build this team, and if I can use the NBA as a reference point, you've got to always make sure you have the right big man, said Sheriff Scandrit. I believe and I know that we have one of the best big men in the business. The sheriff said his goal for O'Neill is to help improve the relationships between law enforcement and the Henry County community. The two men announced the new partnership outside a friend's house, which is an emergency shelter for youth in crisis located just across the street from the sheriff's office. O'Neill said through a partnership with Pepsi, he's purchased new furniture for the shelter and plans to upgrade the entire facility. The NBA star said he has always given back to the community, and while some of his projects will be made public because of his role, others will remain unpublicized. The seven foot one former center who retired from basketball in 2011 was made an honorary deputy in Broward County, Florida in 2019. He's also been a U.S. Deputy Marshal since 2005. Queen Latifah is ready to take down the bad guys. A re-imaging of the 1980s series The Equalizer stars Latifah as Robin McCall, a woman with a mysterious background who uses her extensive skills to help those with no one else to turn. McCall may seem like an average single mom who is quietly raging her teenage daughter, but to a trusted few, she is the Equalizer, an anonymous guardian angel and defender of the downtrodden who's also dogged in her pursuit of personal redemption. The original series, which eventually spawned two movies starring Denzel Washington, starred Edward Woodward as Robert McCall, a retired intelligence agent who, like Latifah's character, comes to the aid of people in need. Latifah's McCall keeps her equalizer activities secret as she raises her teen daughter, Delilah, who's played by Leia DeLeon Hayes. Uh, Lorraine Toussaint plays McCall's aunt, V, who lives with them. Chris North from Sex and the City co-stars as McCall's former CIA handler, William Bishop. The hour-long drama will air after the Super Bowl at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific time, or after the post-game coverage on Sunday, February 7th on CBS. The show will then move to its regular slot at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, Pacific, Sunday, February the 14th. Somebody better get Statler and Waldorf and Anacid because all five seasons of The Muppet Show are coming to streaming for the first time ever. Disney Plus announced today that 120 episodes of Kermit and Company's original variety show will premiere on Friday, February 19th. Featuring sketches, musical numbers, and a theme song that will definitely be stuck in your head for the rest of the day, The Muppet Show ran from 1976, the year I was born, uh, to 1981 in the U.S. The series featured a raft of A-list celebrity guest stars from Julie Andrews to Elton John to Mark Hamill. When the show arrives on Disney Plus next month, it will be the first time that seasons four and five has been available to fans commercially. Disney, which acquired the Muppets Empire in 2004, currently hosts several Muppets shows and movies on its streaming platform, including the original Muppets movie and the gang's most recent variety show, Muppets Now. Though Disney Plus also carries the gang's short-lived ABC workplace sitcom, The Muppets, there's still no justice for their 1990s variety show, Muppets Tonight, which featured the funniest sketch about a punk rock potato that was ever committed to film. Look out for the original Muppets show coming to a TV near you Friday, February 19th on Disney Plus. A 53-year-old Georgia man who faced charges in connection with the attack on the U.S. Capitol has died by suicide, according to the Fulton County Medical Examiner's Office. Christopher Stanton, Georgia, died from a gunshot wound to the chest and was found in the basement of his home. He was arrested on January 6th for attempting unlawful entry onto the grounds of the U.S. Capitol and for violating Washington, D.C. 6 p.m. curfew, to which he pled not guilty in the D.C. Superior Court. A LinkedIn page that appears to belong to Georgia listed him as a regional portfolio manager at BB&T, a bank holding company that merged with SunTrust in 2019 to become Truist Financial up until his death. BB&T has not yet verified this information with news sources. 
Five people died on the day of the siege, including a rioter who was shot inside the building, a Capitol Police officer who died from injuries sustained while protecting the Capitol building, and three who, according to the D.C. Metropolitan Police Department, died of medical emergencies. Axios reported that one of the three medical emergency deaths was a woman who was crushed to death during the breach. A second U.S. Capitol Police officer who died uh, who responded to the siege also died by way of suicide. If you or someone you know is thinking about suicide, please call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK. That's 1-800-273-8255 or text the crisis text line at 741-741. Comedian Dave Chappelle has tested positive for COVID-19, but is asymptomatic, according to a statement from his spokeswoman obtained by CNN. Chappelle performed the first of planned five shows on Wednesday night at the Stubbs Walter Creek Amphitheater and was scheduled to perform subsequent sets on Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. The remaining shows have been canceled and a statement from Chappelle's rep says ticket holders should contact their point of purchase for refunds. Chappelle implemented COVID-19 protocols, which included rapid testing for the audience and daily testing for himself and his team. His diligent testing enabled him to immediately respond by quarantining, thus mitigating the spread of the virus. Chappelle is asymptomatic, the statement continued. Chappelle is one of the uh, most prominent comedians attempting to navigate, the stand -up, uh, navigate stand up during the pandemic. In June, he released a Netflix special called 846, which took place in an outdoor venue where audience members wore masks and adhered to social distancing guidelines. He's also hosted Saturday Night Live this past November. A picture is worth a thousand words. And in this case, more like a hundred thousand Bernie Sanders memes. Two weeks before the inauguration, Brendan Smalwowski, a former sports photojournalist from Connecticut who documents politics for wire service agency France Press, has been outside the Capitol when a mob of Trump supporters stormed the building. On Wednesday, Smalwowski was in the cold outside the Capitol documenting the celebration of the new administration for Joe Biden. With a zoom lens and a Nikon DSLR in hand, Smalwowski went out to capture the mood and the moments of the day. If you look to the right, you're going to see Capitol Hill in this beautiful stand, and all the seats are spread out. You look to the left, you're going to see the National Mall completely empty, he tells Rolling Stone. With his eyes open for Senators Ted Cruz and Josh Hawley, Smalwowski noticed Senator Bernie Sanders taking a socially distanced seat. The photo instantly becomes the biggest meme of the inauguration as amateurs and pros alike inserts Sanders' pose into classical paintings, movie stills, album covers, historical photos, and other memes. His pose was also perfect fodder for reaction memes to convey annoyance at everything from unnecessary meetings to four band concert bills. He's very big. He's a heavy hitter during the primaries. His brand of politics is popular, says Smalwowski. So of course I want to keep an eye on him and how he interacts with people and try to make a nice picture. The rest is history. The burn is taking it all in stride and turning the fun into an opportunity to help others by turning his meme into a sweatshirt for charity. I am, and, I am. and not only are we having fun, what we're doing here in Vermont uh, is we're gonna be selling around the country uh, sweatshirts and T-shirts and all of the money that's going to be raised, which I expect will be a couple of million dollars, will be going to programs like Meals on Wheels mm -hmm. that feed uh, low-income senior citizens. So it turns out actually to be a, a good thing and not only a fun thing. And that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching The Sean Jackson Show Week in Review, The Sean Jackson Show Update, or... I, I don't know what the name of the show is, I'm just here. But thanks for watching nonetheless. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Sean Jackson Show, for short news bits throughout the week and a longer recap like this one on weekends. Also, download The Sean Jackson Show app from your app store. Yeah, there's an app for that. Uh, so you can listen to the past episodes of The Sean Jackson Show podcast with our crew, Glenn, Lori, and Brandon, who will eventually be a part of this uh, recap as well. 
It's music, entertainment, news, and lots of laughs, our podcast, so check those out. Each one is uh, approximately three hours long and will definitely get you through a good portion of your day. Um, so until something else happens or something exciting or newsworthy happens, which is in approximately 30 seconds, let me get out of here. I'm Sean Jackson. Thanks for watching.